the purpose of Wealth Talk is to educate, inform, and hopefully entertain you on the subject of building your wealth. Wealth Builders recommends you should always take independent financial, tax, or legal advice before making any decisions around your finances. Welcome to episode 111 of Wealth Talk. My name is Christian Rodwell, the membership director of Wealth Builders. I'm joined today. I'm a co-host and founder of Wealth Builders, Mr. Kevin Whelan. Hello, Kevin. Hi, Chris. Good to be with you again. Yeah, and we are continuing in launch mode for the Wealth Builders Academy. Just a quick reminder, we had the webinar earlier this month on the 3rd of June. And uh, if you didn't catch that, you can catch the replay and find out all about the brand new Wealth Builders Academy by heading over to wealthbuilders.co.uk forward slash academy launch. And that's relevant today because we've actually got one of our Wealth Builder Academy coaches as our guest today, Kevin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ian is a very fascinating individual. And it's not that he's coaching because he needs any money, as you'll hear, but uh, because he's got a, a passion and a purpose that it took him a little while to get the hang of, I guess. Yeah. And um, specifically, we're talking about the dangers of building wealth in isolation today. And um, I know you shared your story as well, Kevin, but, you know, we talk about DIYing your way to wealth is a, is a really slow process. But, um, you know, that unfortunately is the case for many people. Yes, there's, some, there's something going on, I think, in the mind of, of some people. Obviously, we're not trying to attract those people, which is the best way to build wealth is to do it on your own. Um, and I understand when you're beginning, you're probably doing a lot of things on your own because you're thinking on your own. You don't have people to talk to. You're possibly learning on your own. You don't have anybody else to learn with. And as a result, you can easily fall into the trap of thinking that wealth is a DIY sport and it isn't. It's a team sport. And the value of a community, the inspiration in a community, the help and support in a community is so powerful to see once you've experienced it, but until you kind of are open-minded enough to look inside, you know, why do communities exist is, well, you know, we're social beings after all. uh, And I think there's the power of masterminding. There's the power of, you know, somebody else's distinctions. We know about wealth dynamics and wealth builders and everybody looks at life through a certain lens, but it's the distinctions and differences you get from other people can be the the change that sometimes you need in you in order to you know, make a smoother path because sometimes just following the, the same path can end up in a bit of a cul-de-sac. So I think we're very passionate about the strength of a community and we believe that's the best way to build wealth, don't we really? We sure do, yeah. And uh, Ian's there every week helping our members. So um, let's head on over and listen to our interview today with Ian Halfpenny. Ian, very warm welcome to Wealth Talk today. Thank you, Christian. Great to be here. Ian, you have featured previously on Wealth Talk, um, but uh, not as a full episode dedicated to you. So I'm really looking forward to uh, being able to dive into your story. Obviously, our members know you well as one of our wealth coaches. And um, today we're talking about the dangers of building wealth in isolation. So it's a really key point. You know, it's a big part of The Wealth Builders community is the connection that people have, and we know that it's a difficult, lonely journey sometimes. So I think it's definitely on point. Um, So why don't we kick off, for those that don't know you so well, finding out a little bit about your background and uh, and your road towards financial independence. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's a great topic. I'm glad we're able to talk about it. Um, Yeah, my journey started back in July 2016, and it's actually a little bit of a sad story. My, my stepfather I was very close to was diagnosed with cancer, quite shockingly, in his early 60s. In fact, he was 60 at the time. And uh, later on, four, four and a half months later, he, he passed on. And um, I sort of just remember sitting there with him, just reflecting on his life a little bit and saying he did something slightly different. He actually, um, in his early 50s, he decided to get out of the rat race and do what he was passionate about, which was photography, and basically worked virtually part-time, most of the weeks less than part-time, really. And I just reflected on that and thought, you know what? There's got to be a better way to live rather than being in the rat race. I, I feel like we're so conditioned to you've got to work for 40 years of your life and then retire and then enjoy life. And as I reflected on his life, 
he if he'd waited to retirement age, you know, 67 going up to 68, whenever he actually would never have got there. So he would never have been able to have the freedom that he got in his early 50s. And so that set me on my my path. And um, I'd already already been involved in property a little bit. I'd done everything the wrong way, basically. And so I then set out on a journey to gain financial independence using property as the, the main pillar. And um, remarkably, 22 months later, I'd hit financial independence. Um, so that was October 2018. Uh, it still took me a while. It actually took me till the following July 2019 to, to let go of other income and, and employed income. Um, and then from there onwards, I, I retired in my 30s. Um, the property portfolio just continues to grow. And, um, uh, yeah, that's, that's really sort of where, where everything sort of kicked off from. Yeah, well, that's a, a remarkable feat um, to achieve that, uh, that financial goal within two years. Um, if we're talking wealth builder language, Ian, what was your pillar, what was your strategy, and what was your point of leverage that helped you to do that? Yeah, so my, my pillar was property. Uh, the strategy I used was the BRR strategy. And at the time, I never even knew that's what it stood for. Um, and um, your final question, I've forgotten your third question already. Your, your, your points of leverage to, uh, to help you. Yeah, so I, I used home capacity to help sort of accelerate my journey. And so for me, it was um, using that leverage, using mortgages, and then using the BRR strategy uh, that helped me sort of achieve that fairly quickly. Yeah. And then our, our paths crossed. So um, how, how did that come about, Ian? I do remember the call and, um, you know, it's been a fantastic relationship that we've built since then. But uh, yeah, what led you towards uh, picking up the phone that day? <laughs> I even remember exactly where I was sat when I was talking to you. I pulled over into a lay-by. Um, yeah, so, so it's really interesting. We, we talk a lot about hitting financial independence. But what do you do after that? So I had a, a refurb project at home, which kept me entertained for a month or so. Uh, then we did all the national trusts and then we had coffees out in the afternoons. We went for all loads of dog walks. But you sort of get to a point where, if I'm honest, boredom can start uh, kicking in a little bit. And if you get too bored, then depression can kick in quite quickly. So for me, there was two things. There was a, okay, I've got a lot of friends asking me, you know, how did you do this? Is this real? What's going on? So there were two things that sort of drove me to a conversation with you. One was about how can I help other people, but at the same time, protect my time freedom, which was really important to me. And so I actually had a mental block. I was like, I don't want to be setting up a business of any sort and going back into my own created rat race. What I really want is to be helping people. And that conversation with you was absolutely brilliant because uh, from there, um, I basically was able to join Wealth Builders as a coach and help your community, uh, which I'm fully committed to and absolutely love it. Um, so, yeah, for, for me, the thing that sort of drove to that conversation was a blocker of, I know I don't want to be doing something by myself. I don't want to be building a business, but I genuinely want to be helping people. But at the same time, I want to protect my time freedom. And so our paths aligned and it was just... A beautiful romance, shall we say. <laughs> it was. Well, it, you know, it was really good timing because it was when we were just about to launch the Seven Steps to Wealth program, um, which had initially been the foundation program. So we'd been building that up for, uh, you know, the first 12 months or so with our first 100 members and really getting their feedback to shape the program. And um, and then, we, yeah, we introduced the wealth coaches, of which you uh, you were one of those. Uh, and, uh, you know, how's that first year been? If you look back to, you know, when you first started the coaching and seeing those members, you know, grow and evolve over the last 12 months. I love it. I absolutely love it. It, it energizes me to see a couple of things. I, I, I absolutely love when people join the either the Wealth Builders, the Seven Steps or the Academy, as it's going to be. When people join, um, it's almost like deer in a headlights when they actually realize there's multitudes of ways, seven pillars, that you can build wealth. Because a lot of these things are hidden. We, we don't get this financial education anywhere else. It's not in schools. It's not in universities. And it's not in life. And you don't talk about it in the pub. 
So I sort of love that first interaction with people where their minds are opened and their mindset starts changing. And then as you're sort of walking with them and coaching them over time, you see a few things. You, you see the mindset shift, which I think is absolutely critical for people. Then you see them form a very well articulated financial plan. And that is which pillars are they going to use to accelerate their journey to financial freedom and then ultimately into independence. And then you see the wins along the way. You know, only the other week I had a, a phone call with someone who just brought their first property and it had taken them nearly four years. And purely because of the, the coaching and the program, they were able to get over the things that were holding them back and finally make a plan that makes sense to them in their situation and then get over that hurdle of spinning that wheel of wealth once and making that first purchase. And I was absolutely delighted to play a tiny part in their journey. So, yeah, absolutely love it. Yeah, that's great. And um, of course, we refer now to our recurring revenue roadmap, our nine-step roadmap, which we we walk all of our members through from a place of financial insecurity to security to independence. And we break it down into three stages. And that foundational stage is all about building confidence, exactly what you've just said there, Ian. You know, we know that people sometimes have invested huge amounts of money, huge amounts of time, huge amounts of energy. And sometimes it doesn't work out for them. And that can be demotivating, demoralizing, and having the support of others, you know, your peers, other people who are on that same path and a coach who you build a relationship with, it can really build up that confidence. And it's almost like holding your hand to make sure that you're avoiding the pitfalls and the mistakes, which kind of brings us to our point of today, isn't it? The dangers of building wealth in isolation. So so what are some of those dangers that, that you have observed, Ian? Yeah, I think... Um for me, if I just think about my journey for a little bit, I, I like reading. So I read a lot of books. But unless you take that to the next level and you fully understand what people are talking about and how they're doing it, then it's very easy to make mistakes. And the problem with making mistakes is it's going to cost you one or two things. It's either going to cost you time or it's going to cost you money if you make the right, the, the wrong mistake. Um, I think it was Benjamin, Benjamin Franklin who said, tell me and I forget, teach me and I remember, but involve me and I will learn. And I think that's absolutely critical. I think education is key. From the education, you develop that knowledge. But I ultimately believe community is where you can get to the bottom of absolutely everything and learn how to apply that knowledge into your situation to then reach your goals. So I think there's a couple of dangers. There's, there's you can make mistakes because you don't have that support around you and that's going to cost you time or money. I think if you're not within some sort of community, then it's going to take you a lot longer because you don't have that support. Um, and also, you know, we, we call it DIYers when you do it yourself. If you go out and build wealth by yourself as a DIYer, it's a very lonely journey. You know, I'm, I'm guilty of it. Absolutely. And you don't have anyone around you to bounce ideas off or to clarify ideas or to check ideas. You also don't have people around you telling you telling you their story and how they've done things, because that might open your mind to maybe a different pillar or a different strategy within a pillar. And I think, you know, a community unites us together with a common cause. And when you've got other people around you, they can build you up. And, you know, let, let's be clear, it's not easy. Building wealth is not easy, whichever pillar that you use. And so there are times where things get difficult. I remember receiving a phone call. Uh, it was my wife's birthday weekend. We were in London, out at a nice restaurant. I got a phone call basically to say three properties that I was about to buy were all about to go belly up and I was going to lose them purely because I'd got the wrong people around me. I hadn't picked my power team, my leadership team right, and my mortgage advisor had got something wrong. But I had no one to turn to in that time. Obviously, I had my wife and she's a great support, but I had no one else I could turn to to say, look, I've hit this barrier. How do I overcome it? And if I'd had that, I think I would have definitely um, hit financial independence quicker. And I think that's the key. It's sort of it's keeping your sanity along the journey. It's helping to build the right mindset. It's having that support around you. And ultimately from that, I, I wholeheartedly believe uh, you accelerate your success in whatever you're doing. 
Yeah, and I think another important aspect, which perhaps we can touch on, Ian, is is trust. Is knowing who to trust because one of the um, you know one of the common routes that that you know I, myself and and so many others um, you know venture into the world of of entrepreneurship of personal development is you know is often through picking up a copy of Rich Dad Poor Dad. You know that's so often the light bulb moment for people, or perhaps it's listening to a podcast or coming across a video. But it opens up a whole world online of, you know, conflicting opinions and and people telling you you can be successful doing this or successful doing that. And people just don't know where to turn, who to trust. So there's many communities and many fantastic communities out there. And um, but but, you know, that can be almost prohibitive, can't it, for people? And, And perhaps why they DIY is because they're just not quite sure, you know, who to follow, who to trust. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it is critical joining the right community or being part of the right community with like minded people. I think there's absolutely a danger of uh, information overload by just being a DIYer, Googling things, listening to multitudes of people's opinions, because there are different opinions out there on different topics. And I, I absolutely believe if you are walking hand in hand with someone who is one step ahead of you, two steps ahead of you or five steps ahead of you, they are going to help you on your journey and support you where there's a lot of people. And I tell you what, what really frustrates me. I'll try not to create a rant moment from this. But when there's so many people online who are giving advice, but they're five steps behind where you are already. And people start listening to those people who They're not credible. You might like them. You might feel like you trust them because you've got some sort of social media connection with them. However, where's their path? Where's their journey? And do you really know them? Can you really get to know someone through social media very well? So, again, I I really point people back to a community because within a community, you get to see people. You get to talk to people. You get to build a relationship with people. And I think from that then comes the right support that you need to accelerate your journey. Now, you mentioned the rat race earlier, Ian. Um, What advice would you give someone who is listening now and they're stuck in the rat race and they want to own more of their time? What would be a few key lessons? Mm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so easy to get stuck in the rat race because it's like, society sort of dictates it to you. you you go and get educated you might carry on and go into university then you get a job you work for four decades you save your pension a little bit and then you spend maybe one or two decades if you're lucky enjoying life doing what you want to do i, I was looking at the ons data recently and the national life expectancy for a man is 79.4 and it's 83.1 for a woman Now, retirement age is 65. That's going up to 67 in 2028, I think it is. So basically, as a man, you've got 12.4 years to do what you want with your time. And as a woman, you've got 16.1 years to do what you want with your time. And let's be honest, it's at a time where your bodies don't really allow you to do everything that you might really want to be doing anyway. So I feel like this whole system is just against us. By the time you've, you, you can actually have time freedom and you've, maybe you've used pension, this is the traditional way, you've used a pension to enjoy life, your body won't let you do what you really want to do. You might not have the energy to do what you really want to do. So it's all backwards for me. So I, I, I would, my advice would be the first thing is learn the foundations and the fundamentals about money because the key is going to be understanding how you can have money work for you so you don't have to work. And that that phrase can sound so foreign to some people because it's not in our DNA in any way, shape or form. But there is absolutely many ways, we talk about the seven pillars, where you can actually use what you've got and that can actually be helping you to create more money rather than you exchanging time for money. So I think my, my absolute advice, number one, is gonna be you've, you've got to get education. You've got to get an understanding of how money works and what to do with it. And I, I really do feel like I'm, I'm, I'm laboring a point here about community, but you've got to have people around you that you can talk to about it wherever you're at in the journey. So if you are stuck in the rat race, start talking to people who are not. How did they do it? 
What steps did they take? Um, because, you know, as British people, we don't really go right down to the pub and talk about money. We hold that back. You never ask someone, you know, oh, how much do you earn? What do you do with that money? We just don't, we don't talk about it. Don't talk about money. I moved to Australia in my early 20s or mid 20s. They talk about money. Someone asked me directly, how much do you earn? I was offended. How do I answer this question? Because we don't, in our society, we won't talk about money. And I think we've got to break that and go, okay, you might not want to be, be comfortable about talking about how much you earn or what's your net worth or anything, but maybe open up conversations about how are you using your money to further invest uh, in your life or to invest so it's earning more for you um, and have those sort of conversations and and you know they're not really with family and friends unless they've been on the journey it's got to be in a community of like-minded people who can talk openly about it so I realize I've ranted on a little bit so absolutely understand money foundations fundamentals get into a community where you can talk about things and just challenge the preconceived social norm of let's work four decades so we can enjoy one mm. we've covered a lot of key points there ian if you if you look back at when you were right at the starting blocks again is there only one thing that you would do differently oh yeah good I, I i feel like i'm going to overlap on the on on the answer quite a lot because i i, I would say if i was to start all over again I absolutely would want a community. There we are, I'm ranting on about it. Um, but I, I want people around me that I can talk to about investments, about my pension, how could it be performing better, about what on earth is a SAS, what's a SIP, how do they work? Um, property, um, you know, people talk about investing in property, but there's millions of strategies within property just alone. So I absolutely would have wanted more people I could talk to about it. Um, I, I felt it was a one-way dialogue between me, family, and friends, and I didn't have that, even if it's just one person, a good coach or mentor or someone that I can bounce ideas off and talk about. Um, I would absolutely look at broader education. So um, my focus initially was I knew about property, I thought about property, so I went straight into property. It got me to financial independence, which was great. I've carried on with that, but also after hitting financial dependence, I then learned about all the other pillars and what else I could be doing. Because once you own your own time and you, you, you've been on a journey, you start thinking about other pillars and how else can I get my money to work harder for me so I don't have to. And so right back at the beginning, I would have loved to have had a bit more of a, a broader understanding or broader knowledge um, and may, maybe there was a quicker way to, to financial independence for me rather, th rather than property and the strategy that I picked. Um, so I, I, I would look for a community, look for broader education, and of course, look for some sort of support where I've got people I can bounce ideas off. Now, in a recent episode, Ian, episode 107, we were looking at social media and how you can leverage social media um, you know, to build investors, build your reputation. But it can be a double-edged sword social media. And sometimes we see skeptical people on there who, who kind of point the finger and say, well, if you're already financially independent, you know, why are you still doing coaching? Why are you still doing this stuff? You know, what would be your response to, to anyone who, who, who says that, Ian? Yeah, well, I, I think the stereotypical response is I want to help people. And, uh, and I realize people can just tune off from that. But there is a genuine desire. Once you hit financial freedom or independence, you realize you, you've, you've achieved something which is quite grand. Not many people get to do it in their lifetime. And you genuinely want to help people because you can see them suffering in the rat race. You know, I've, I've got friends who are on a great journey, but they're still getting up before their kids wake up, commuting on the motorway to go to work. By the time they get home, their kids are in bed. So their quality time as a family is purely at weekends when actually they need to be rechar recharging ready for the week ahead. And they're trapped in that because they, they're not part of a community. They, they don't have that support. They're not open to learning. And it breaks my heart to see people not living what would be defined as their dream life. So, you know, stereotypically, the answer is helping others. However, um, I think for me, the other driver was once you've achieved financial independence and you own your own time, what are you going to do with it? Because if you don't plan that, it's so easy to get bored. 
And there's only so much of a good thing that you can actually take. You know, I remember one year we did 17 holidays and 17 long weekends away. It was wonderful. But you do get to a point where you're like, where do you want to go next? I don't know. Well, we've just come back from somewhere. Should we go anywhere? I don't know. Do you want to? Let's just stay at home for a little bit and enjoy home. So you do get to a point where so much of a good thing actually can wear a little bit thin. Um, and so um, I, I, I would say for me, it was about helping people. It was about investing some of my time, but not all of my time, because time uh, freedom is really important to me. Um, but I wanted to invest my time into something else. That also helped me keep my mind stimulated, keep me learning, keep educating more. Yeah, you know, behind me, I've got five different books that I'm ready to read because I've constantly want to be evolving and learning more, learning more about money, opening up conversations with people about money. I mean, some people even cringe when they hear the word money. Let's talk about money, 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 money. Um, and it can be a good conversation to have. So for me, it was um, it was about stimulating my mind by helping other people. But at the same time, I needed something to do. Well, we, we appreciate all of the help that you are providing for our members, Ian. And obviously now we've, we're just relaunching as the uh, Wealth Builders Academy with, uh, you know, even more structure, even more support, even more education for people who want to embark on that journey towards financial independence. So um, exciting times. Absolutely. Yes. Ian, really appreciate you sharing with us today and uh, look forward to the next time that we, uh, we have you share on Wealth Talk. You're welcome. Been a, been, been a great chat. Thank you. Well, Ian laboured the point there, but it's an important one, is the importance of community, Kevin, and um, having like-minded people who are on the same journey as you, but of course, having some people that are a few steps ahead that you can learn from, and uh, they can help you avoid some of those pitfalls that certainly come along the way. Well, also recognising that you're going to be a few steps ahead of somebody else. So it's that imagination we give, don't we, on the bridge across from being financially insecure to secure and independent. It is a bridge. There's always a gap. And, of course, we have our members visualise, don't we, reaching out ahead of them, being humble enough to ask for help and not arrogant about that, and reaching behind them to help other people. And what surprises people, especially those who come from a corporate background, I think, is that how helpful people genuinely are, not self-servingly, not in some kind of, you know, I need to give to get way, but just the way that people share knowledge, share contacts, share inspiration. You know, there's so much sharing going on. It's kind of a, it's not woo-woo, it's not, it's not a cult. It's just people who are building wealth seem to be much more warm and engaging and predisposed to want to help other people just as they want to be helped themselves. Don't you find? I do, I do. And talking of sharing, we have had... One of our members share on Trustpilot this week. So uh, why don't we quickly read out the latest review? And this is from Chris, who says, A truly enriching journey with Wealth Builders. I'm totally impressed and inspired with the Wealth Builders service. They have truly excellent met- methodology, culture, and community to help you on your wealth building journey to time and financial freedom. I've never seen an equivalent offering, and my only wish is that I discovered them 20 years ago. Highly recommend start with the Wealth Builders podcasts, which have tons of value and go from there. Oh, well, that's a very nice thing. Well, the Wealth Builders didn't exist 20 years ago, of course, but um, I mean, I was doing things, I was DIYing it, Chris, let's be honest, uh, 20 years ago, but that's because there was no program. So it's uh, thanks to the lessons that I learned. And then latterly, Chris, with your great tempo energy to help me get this documented and shared that we've been able to create such an accessible program. You know, I was coaching or mentoring people really, which is what I do primarily for quite high premium prices, uh, but it wasn't accessible to lots of people. And I was feeling frustrated that my goal of 50,000 people, a football stadium full of wealth building people all looking to help people and being helped uh, just wasn't being fulfilled because, you know, I could only probably deal with I don't know, 50 to 100 people max. Uh, at a time and I wasn't serving enough. So, you know, thanks to you and the remainder of our team, Chris, for uh, bringing that more to life. And um, because we can capture all the lessons and all the IP, we can make it accessible because it's not about me delivering it one-on-one. 
Yeah, no, well, it's been it's been a pleasure, and uh, of course, you know, one of the main reasons why we you know we've evolved into the academy now is to create that structured process that anybody can follow. And as you said, you know, it was all in all in your head, Kevin, and it's a process you followed. We know it's tried and tested. Many many people having success with it, but we've never really kind of got it into an accessible format where you know we have it now where hundreds of people can join and uh, go through that together. So, um, you know, every month we invite one of our members and we talk through the roadmap that we have now, our recurring revenue roadmap. And we always hear similar lessons. And again, we've heard some today from Ian because their principles, as we often say, they don't change. You have to go through these steps in the order if you want to move from insecurity to security to independence. And it all begins with a strong reason why. And that was certainly the case for Ian. Well, that reason why echoed my own, didn't it, in many respects. Um, the tragic death of somebody early. In his case, I think the difference was his his relation was had taken decisions, hadn't they, earlier to be uh, kind of focused on their time and, and made a decision almost to retire early. Fortunately, my father didn't make it uh, to retire early, and that was the big catalyst for me. So it's interesting that you don't have to have tragedy to have a catalyst, but usually the catalyst is the thing that interrupts you from inertia, a reason to overcome inertia. That's an ROI, Chris, another one of the little nuggets that come out from time to time. And you need that reason to overcome inertia in order for you to make a commitment to become financially independent. And that's what it takes. You know, it takes a commitment. It doesn't take a plan at the beginning because you're not going to be confident yet. You're not going to be competent yet. You just need to be committed. Uh, and as Dan Sullivan would say, you know, courageous. So you get committed and then courage steps in. And you have to be courageous because you, when you start your wealth building journey, you don't know how you're going to make it. You don't. You've got to have a leap of faith, right? So it's just now we've got a pathway for people to follow. So there's no longer a leap of faith because we've got a safety net and we've got a path. So, and we teach them all the skills. So hopefully, you know, we're making a big difference in the lives of our members and hopefully they will help other people and influence other people's lives too. You know, so powerful there for Ian, you know, saying that had his stepfather not have made that decision to retire in his early 50s and focus on his passion, which was photography, he never would have, would have, would have made it. You know, never would have had any time to enjoy uh, that later life. And um, <clears throat> well, that's a sad tragedy for so many people, isn't it, really? But it's nice to be thinking about kind of what that passion that you have or even just the imagination of imagine you're financially independent, you've got all the money you could possibly spend. How do you want to spend your day? How do you want to spend your month? How do you want to spend your year? You know, what are the ingredients in that that would be important to you? And I think Ian probably, you know, from his own admission, didn't quite do that at the start. Mm, yeah. And, um, you know, I guess we heard from Bronwyn recently, didn't we? And and she always said that it was a passion for her to to travel. And so some people, you know, they're very clear about what that end goal looks like. And others, as you said earlier, you know, perhaps it's not. You just have to take that first step. You know, you have to get some momentum. And, you know, you don't always need to know what the, the end picture looks like. You just got to take that first step. No, you're quite right. It helps if you do because it gives you something to look forward to. But uh, and, and some people have that. You know, Bronwyn was very clear. Um, I think, you know, we've got a future podcast coming, haven't we, where one of our members is very clear on their passion, which is, you know, a particular hobby, a particular thing they just love to do that they never found the time to do enough of, um, whatever that means for you. You know, we're not talking about just beach surfing and um, playing golf, you know, we're talking about lots of things that people want to do to give back. And it could even just be a focus on your family, how to teach them and, pass on the wisdom to them. That's just as good a purpose as any. Yeah. And I think a, a good lesson that came out of the, the conversation with Ian is is kind of keep it simple. And that even Ian wasn't following, you know, a particular process. He had chosen his pillar, which was property. He found a strategy that suited him well, which was the buy, refurb, refinance. And he used some leverage, which was home capacity. And I mean, very, very quickly, within 22 months, he had reached his own, um, you know, financial independent level. So, you know, when you get clear and sometimes keeping it simple is is the best way. Well, it certainly can be because we know one of the challenges for many people 
and all different wealth dynamics will approach it in a different way. They'll they'll see the plethora of opportunity, the horn of plenty that it appears, you know, there's so many choices, not just in property. I mean, there's dozens of property strategies, dozens of investment strategies, dozens of business strategies, dozens of IP strategies, dozens of JV strategies. You know, if you compound that up in your brain, then all of a sudden you get overwhelmed uh, and people get stuck or they get, you know, somehow like a rabbit in the headlights. So having some process that you're enjoying, you can follow uh, to get you to security, ideally, so that when you get to security, you can afford to give up the day job, which is what uh, Ian did, or give up the need to spend as much time, let's say, not necessarily to give it up, but you could spend less time. And we've seen some of our members go to four days a week and then three days a week and so on. So they're giving themselves uh, time. And in fact, you know, we're very passionate about this, Chris. We give our own staff, don't we, time every month to be able to pursue their own wealth building activities as a sort of a benevolent employer. So, you know, we're pleased to be able to do that because we know most people in jobs just never find the time. Absolutely. Yeah. So we've talked a lot about community today. And uh, of course, we've got our free community on Facebook. So, um, you know, if you're listening now and you're not already a member, then do just search for Wealth Builders in Facebook and uh, join the community. And, um, you know, you can ask questions, you can see what other people are up to and uh, just build that first bit of confidence. Or if you're already some way down the path, you know, perhaps connect and uh, build some relationships with people who are doing other things in different pillars, different strategies. Uh, that's what it's all about. Mm, I mean, I remember seeing a comment from somebody on uh, joined our Facebook group and it's, of course, it's free to join and there's no promotion going on inside the community. It's just a genuine uh, open community for people talking about their wealth. They said, you know, we, we we give people the option, don't we, if they want to have a conversation with us, they've got a burning question. There's something they've been putting off. There's something they've overlooked. You know, they know it and they want to talk about it. We offer that opportunity right from the get-go. But I remember this person saying, I'd just like to learn inside the community and be part of it. And I think that's a perfect answer. You know, that's just great. Just consume our information. We're very passionate about giving things for free. Uh, we want to do that because we want to make ourselves accessible. And if the timing is right for you to get to know us more, great. And if it isn't, just keep consuming the stuff until you, know, you find a pathway that you're willing to set off. Ideally, not in a DIY way, as we said earlier on, uh, but whatever community you choose, find a community you resonate with and you'll find it a much more enjoyable and less stressing experience if you've got other people to talk to. Uh, because let's face it, only 5% of the population build their wealth. So who are you going to talk to? You know, the, the rest of the population aren't going to make it. So they're probably not interested in a conversation with you. They'll probably poo-poo your plan to be financially independent. What well, that sounds risky or are you sure you really want to do that? You know, there's all sorts of naysayers that go on which can derail anybody. So find a community, get support wherever you get it from. You know, we'll be happy for you to be in our community for free if that's what's uh, useful for you. Yeah. So hopefully you enjoyed listening today to uh, the conversation with Ian and discussing some of the dangers of building wealth in isolation. We'll be back again with another episode of Wealth Talk, same time, same place next week, Kevin. Mm -hmm. And until then, my friend, see ya. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget that we are constantly updating our resources inside the Wealth Builders membership site to help you create, build and protect your wealth. Head over to wealthbuilders.co.uk slash membership right now for free access. That's wealthbuilders.co.uk slash membership.